Tam Parijapa Saitya Krishna Shitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabondo Jagadbande Gopesh Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Sata Kansane Gurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Shabanu Sute Devi Panamami Hari Priye Bon Shakal Sarubya Shakra Sinjai Vacham Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Shvetanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadha Shiva Sajigom Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Rama Ram Ram Hare 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 So you are, are you appreciating this second chapter? Oh, yeah. uh, yes. Well, yeah, I remember it was my, my Guru Maharaj's favorite one. He used to tell us that. Yeah, so it's quite... Uh, everything has been put in there, but a little bit in disorder. <laughs> that is why we will see a lot... I mean, Arjun will be confused in the beginning of the third chapter, beginning of the fifth chapter, because Lord Krishna has presented many things, but a bit disorderly. Mm. Okay, so uh, let's do a recap. Please share with me what you retain from last, last class with Chandra Prabhu. Mm. No. Don't speak all at once. <laughs> <laughs> anybody, anybody um, basically, it was all about um, like the sense control verses last week, which we continued on with your questions as well. But Chandra honestly went on a lot. Like we didn't get through all of our questions. He he went and told us lots of different stories, which were informative. But um, so that was the main. I feel like the main oh, thing. I was, think. You yeah. didn't get you you didn't get all your answers. All your questions answered. We yeah, we didn't go through right. Am I correct, guys? We didn't go through all of the answers, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm having a hard yeah. time uh, recalling what because he did tell a, a number of stories, and I'm trying to remember what yeah. they were. Anyway, in any case, have, you, yeah. you you still want to bring up some un unanswered questions? You please feel free to do so. Okay, so basically. Let's start from, let's do a little recap perhaps. Huh? It's always good to tie up the previous wagons, you know, it's like a train, you know, <laughs> we have to make sure all the wagons are. Tell me about the analogies that they use in from the last, from the last session, the analogy. Yes, which analogy, tell me. Yeah, I don't know, that why I, I'm not sure about it. Hare Krishna, by the way. Oh, you got a little boy with you. Huh? It's very small. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will be a little bit um, disturbed. It's yeah. noise because I'm not in my house. I'm so out of town. So okay. I may not be in camera and sound. Yeah, I understand. I understand. I will, I will listen to you. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I've got one a bit older now, but you know, I know. Okay, so. Basically, uh, remember, Arjun put up quite a few questions, very pertinent, sanguine questions in 54. Uh, so we're moving, moving towards the end of the second answer. About to, I'm going to start off from 60 onwards. Huh? That's what I was told by Chandra. So we're moving towards the end of the second answer, beginning with the third answer. So basically the second answer, just 
to remind you all was Kabasa right? in 54. Arjuna has asked Kabasa. Kabasa means what is this language? Mm. That was answered in 55. I guess Chandra covered that, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. And of course, all these questions have also internal meanings. I hope he addressed, he addressed that. Then also in 54, Arjun is asking, Kim, Kim sorry, Prabhasita, how does he speak? And that was answered in 56 and 57. So now we are touching on the third answer to the question, Kim Asita. Asita means how does he stand still? So basically, how does he sit? But again, uh, the Acharya has mentioned that the, those questions are tagged with internal meanings. So this Kimasita, in essence, it means how does he not engage in senses? Mm. When, what is his mentality like when his senses are restrained from their objects? That's what it means, basically. What is his inside is his mentality like when he his senses are restrained from their objects? And that is answered from let's say 58 to 63. And then Kim Brajeta in 54, Arjuna has asked, Kim Brajeta, how does he walk? That will be answered in 64 plus. Okay. So let's delve into it. 60. Yajato yapikonteya purushaya purushasya vipaschitaha indriyani pramatini haranti prasabam manaha Translation. Jacob, if you want, you can tell. The senses are so strong and impetuous, O Arjun that they forcibly carry away the mind, even of a man of discrimination who is endeavoring to control them. Yes, exactly. So automatically, I mean, we are touching on very deep part of the guitar, even though we're still in the beginning. So we may go a little bit in terms of themes here, thematically, you know, because they are so deep. So we may slow down the pace because we have to go a little deep. So the question was, I think my, I, yes, my question to you was in 60, which type of candidate are we talking about here? I gave you a clue in 42. Uh, Avas, Avas Avipashita, sorry, in 42. And here we are, this, Lord Krishna is describing Vipashitaha. So there's, those two terms are opposite. So could you please explain why Lord Krishna is opposing the term, the term, sorry, that he used in 42? So in, in uh, verse 42, he used uh, avipaschitaha, uh, yes. men, and, and Srila Prabhupada translates that as um, men with a poor fund of knowledge. Yes. And then in 60, we see the opposite term, meaning full of discriminating knowledge. Um, so, exactly. Yeah, very good. So in 42, 43, which kind of candidates are we talking about in that particular, this couple of verses, 42, 43, what, what are we describing there? Men with the poor fund of knowledge. Yes, but in terms of which category do they belong to? The followers of Karmakanda activities. Very good. Very good. Uh, so, so, and in contrast to that, here we are talking about, remember the 16, yeah? the senses are so strong and impetuous. Even though you may be a vipashtaha, so you are a man of discriminating knowledge. Still, you're having difficulty. And you look at 60, yatata. Yatata means, what does it mean, yatata? Yatata. 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 Sorry. While endeavoring. Yes. 
So they are not, be careful, they are not at all like 42, 42, we are talking about karma candies. They are not even karmis. Karma candies means, means karmi, basically. What to speak of being a vikami? No. They are yogis. They're very, they're high, high float personalities. Uh, they strive for spiritual realization. So they are not ordinary people at all. Uh, so first of all, we, talk, we have to start from this predicate here. They're very high person. And still, Indriyani Pramatini, Haranti. Haranti means to drag away. In other words, the senses are so powerful. They're going to drag away the mind. Even on that level of practice, the person is yatata, is in yatata, shintayon to mom, uh, just like symptoms in, in seven, uh, I think, well, anyway, much later in the guitar. So they are striving for self realization. They are endowed with a great deal of discrimination. So we're not talking about the Vishayi here at all. Uh, even we're not talking about a Kama Kandi who may be dragged by the senses, even by, by religious means. You know, we're not talking about Vikarmis who defile the process of Dharma uh, in the process of enjoyment, like extra or premarital relationships uh, that will be me basically. No, we're talking about a very high personality, a yogi. So we have discussed in 42, 43, yeah, the, the karmis, kamat manaha, swaga para, they are aiming at swaga, they want swaga look. They are desirous, even, to re, even willing to restrain sense gratification for the sake of reaching out to higher realm of sense gratification on Svagalok. So they are avas, avis, avipashitaha. They're not in done with good discrimination. So here back to 60, uh, this fellow is trying like anything to control the senses, but the senses take over. Haranti, drag away the mind. So that may apply to us because in Iskan, you know, we we pursue the we we basically we are dharmic pers persons, aren't we? We're trying to be dharmic, but we may pursue discreetly the process of sense gratification within the presence of dharma. You know. So basically, let's get into the details of that. It's like the palm of the hand. Uh, you have five fingers which are grouped about the hand. So in the same way, we have the time mattress, the sense objects, isn't you know the sense objects, and we have the commandrias, the organs of actions, we have the ganandrias, the knowledge acquiring senses. So we connect to the former through the latter. How do we access the sense of the, of the objects? Through the knowledge acquiring senses and through the organs of the actions. So the indriyas are connected internally with the mind. The senses are connected internally with the mind. Just like the fingers are connected, the five fingers and there's two sets of five senses. Same, same analogy. So just like Krishna is saying much later, you will see in 15.9, I believe, Shrotram, uh, you know the verse perhaps, Shrotram, Shakshu Sparsanam Sha. Shrotram means the ears. Shakshu Sparsanam means the touch. Granam, smelling part. Rasanam, sorry. Rasanam means first, Rasanam means the tongue, tasting. Granam, the, the nose. Uh, we are attracted by the sense objects. So Krishna says, Adishtaya manas So they are grouped about the mind. 
And each time we get a new body, we are given a new set of, of senses, Ganendria, Kamendria. Vishayamu Pasevate. And because of that, we can enjoy. We can enjoy the sense objects. The mind is just like a, a matching agency. Uh, people come to a matching agency. I want to find a very good lady. I want to find a very good man. Uh, so the, the, what does the mind do? It matches the, our senses. We have two sets, Genendria, Kamendria, with the sense objects. You follow? So here in 60, it's so high, even though that person is very well situated, still on that platform, Haranti Prabhavam, Prasabam, sorry, Manaha, the senses will draining away, will drag away the mind. So that was my question to you. Uh, I just wrote here. Please explain with forceful details the process of degradation as given in this subsection. Uh, so I was not, you, I noticed you, you tended to jump immediately to Jayatu Vishayam Pumsa, which is coming up in 62. I was expecting more of the nitty gritty, how we, the senses become, we become exposed. Uh, we become exposed externally to sense objects through the desires. Uh, in other words, we become exposed to the sense objects. Then the desires that are created by this perception uh, of the sense objects. Remember the mind is enabling us to perceive the sense objects. In other words, the mind is doing the connection between the senses and the sense objects. If there was no mind, we wouldn't be attracted. Like if you don't see the girl, you don't become attracted. Understand? So the, what is this agency which is making the connection? This is the mind. So when we become exposed externally uh, to, to sense objects, then the desires are created by that, by the perception of the sense objects. And the mind is forcefully drawn towards that. Then our desires get further ignited, fueled up, if I may, inflame, in other words, just like a moth, uh, a moth, you know what is, a moth is attracted by the fire. So we are drawn towards the tan matras. Uh, the tan matras means the sense objects. So Krishna is giving us a warning, 60 is a warning. Doesn't mean because we are devotee that we, we know uh, we are sadaka, we are still practicing. We know that we are still prone to to fall down. We are, our spiritual life is just, as we say, we are hang, hanging in there. You know, we are, it's by a thread, basically. So giving us a warning here. So we discussed in 58, remember, the example of the tortoise, the, it withdraws its limbs. So we are talking about this kind of candidate. Is is He knows. He has to withdraw the limbs in times of danger. He's striving, yatato, to withdraw the senses. But still the senses dragging, drag away the mind outward. Do, why? Because we contemplate the senses. So it's a very sobering shlok, you know, a very sobering verse. Remember Vishvamitra? Can someone tell us the story of Vishvamitra? You know the story of Vishnamitra? Uh, it's mentioned. Uh, for, yes. Was he, was he meditating underwater? Uh, I think it's Sobari Muni, rather. Mm. Vishnamitra was, he became a Brahma Rishi, he's extremely powerful, but he, it took him a long, I mean, perhaps millions of years to come to the level of Brahma Rishi. Mm. Uh, at one point, he was steeped in, in self realization, and he heard the, twing, the jingle of the bell of. Uh, that's Apsara, heavenly damsel of Menaka. So we could say, I mean, wait a minute here. Just by hearing the jingle, it falls down. So what is the process of degradation? I was trying to 
extract that from you? <laughs> is it just by hearing the jingle? How does it work? In other words, there, there's, there's more to it. We have to understand when that sound enters the mind, the jingle bell, let's, let's take the case of Vishwamitra. What does it do internally? What does it do to us? It rekindles the imagination. Mm -hmm. You understand? So then the image, imagination becomes triggered and it bursts forth upward, right? Fills us with fantasies of pleasure. The imagination, remember twice in the guitar, 255, 624, Savantata Manugatan, they are mental concoctions. Desires for sense gratifications are mental concoctions. We hear the jingle bell, immediately it triggers the imagination and it fills us. We are bursting forth, uh, just like jolting. And it fills us with fantasies of pleasures. And then we are dragged away. This is 16. And of course, we're talking about the male perspective here because oftentimes we can see in the Shastra, the male, pers the male perspective is given because, you know, but it works both ways. Uh, ladies can also ascertain, I'm sure, that they can be allured by men. And even Shimad Bhagwatam mentions uh, the other way around, from the lady's perspective, the, the deer and the hunter, remember the Bhagavatam? The deer is the female, and she becomes enticed by the flute of the hunter. And she will be shot by the hunter. So it works both ways. But oftentimes, there's an emphasis on, from the male perspective, because obviously, you know, the male body may be a little more suitable for, for self-realization. So look at the shlok given by Shri Prabhupada in, in 60. What is that verse? Do you know that, that verse a little bit? He's quoting Yamunacharya. Do you know Yamunacharya a little bit? Does it ring a bell? <laughs> I, oh, will, yes. He's uh, a member of the Sri Sampradaya, medieval Bhakti Saint. Yes, way back. He was basically two generations before Ramanuj. He could have been the grandfather of Ramanuj. And basically Ramanuj going to take over the post because by the time Ramanuj arrived to take his darshan, he, he had already sh shortly left his body. So he's a maha great acharya. But he was, at one point in time, in the beginning of his life, he, was a, he became a king. Uh, he, he had competed in a, a play, in a debate, and he won over, by large, the, uh, the debate. And the queen had told her husband prior to the debate, that boy is so charming. He was very young then, 12 or so. That boy is so charming. You should give it some big uh, token, some, you know, in, in case he, he wins. I, I propose, my dear husband, that you give him half of your kingdom. <laughs> and the boy did win. So then he became a king, a full fledged king, and he fell into Maya in one sense for long. And then he was brought back to Krishna consciousness and he became Yamuna Charya. I, I won't go into the details, a long story. And then after he, after he became such a Nacharya, he composed a series of verses. This is one of them. So did you notice, he knows about, about sex life. He knows about sense gratification. Otherwise, why would he discuss? Why would he spit on it? Mm. First question. Why would he spit on it if he hadn't known it? You understand? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean, the point is, it doesn't mean that because we have bad thoughts that we should act upon it and fall down. Everyone has bad thoughts. Even someone advanced 
one time I asked a sannyasi, uh, do you have impure thoughts? He told me, yes, of course. Because as long as we are surrounded by material energy, uh, this is the material world, material look, we are surrounded by Maya and plus our samskar. We're not born pure, we're not born a saint. So because of our, we, we are bombarded by, by previous samskar, previous vasanas, uh, desires, and bad thoughts will come. Doesn't mean we should act upon them. So in other words, the response will differ whether you are Prakrita Bhakta, Kanishta Adhikari, or an advanced devotee, because an, obviously an advanced devotee won't act upon it. That's, and you can see here, this Yamuna Chaya, what does he say? I spit at the thought. Because he was engrossed into, for a couple of decades even, uh, in his, early in his life. So again, the, the response will differ whether you are advanced, or a Prakrita Bhakta, or a materialist. Materialist will welcome. A materialist will, why did it, why did it take you so long to come to me? A materialist will, is encouraging sense gratification. You follow? Hmm. So Shira Prabhupada yes. did, did say that what is intelligence? Uh, it, it say that intelligence entails to kill the thoughts when before they turn into action. It's fine, you have the thoughts, no problem, because it's bound. As I say, we are bombarded, we are surrounded, some scar, we had previous bad, some scar. So you kill the thoughts as soon as, before it, it, it turned into action. So 59, remember Niraharasya, this is the key point, Niraharasya, Niraharasya by negative restriction. No, it won't work. Niraharasya is, is not sufficient. Uh, and Srila Prabhupada is saying in 60, Bhakti Parishanubhavo Virakti is quoting, I mean, he's paraphrasing that verse 11, 11 to 42. Uh, if we fill the mind, yes, if we fill the mind with Krishna, then we are satiated. Just like you have a nice meal. Uh, you took a nice feast, then again someone comes with gulab jamun and, and everything. Prabhu, I, I'm full. Bhakti parishanu bhavu virakti. Because the virakti will come, because you're full. You can refuse even gulab jamun and bai dai bara. Because you're full. You, you are satiated, you are, you are nicely full. So, in other words, in this section of the Gita, Shida Prabhupada is more concerned with how, how to, how, how I want my devotees, I want them to know how to apply those verses. I'm running out of the battery here. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, no. Okay. So he's very concerned, Shida Prabhupada. How these devotees of Iskan are going to apply these shlokas in their lives? He wants to make sure we don't fall down. That's why he's so detailed. He's very this is compassion. You know, he is. He goes deep inside. How, make sure they don't fall down, because he doesn't want us to to be to be lost, to to stray away. Uh, this is his, his compassion, actually. Any questions? Okay, I can see you're very sober. <laughs> it's a sobering verse, huh? it's by, definitely. This is Gita, huh? Gita is, it's not a, it's not a, a book for, a joking book, you know, it's, it's like real stuff. You know, what is life? How to, Maya is there. It's not a, she's not a concept. She's right there. <laughs> so Krishna knows. Just like one time Srila Prabhupada gave sannyas, he used to give sannyas to youngsters, 22, 23. I remember the youngest sannyas ever was 
Drishta Jun Maharaj, Drishta Jun Maharaj, I don't know if you, of course, long back. He was 23, very handsome guy. Very handsome. And Prabhupada, he gave him sannyas. Sannyas is beaming with joy. And Prabhupada is telling him very soberly, you don't know how, how cruel I am to you. You don't know how cruel I am to you. Because Prabhupada knew how a guy like this is going to be tested. 23, the prime of his use. So you see, this is not a joke. So th these verses are very, very important for, for our daily life. It's not just philosophy, how to apply. Okay, next question, what was it? Um, so let's move on perhaps, unless, uh, let's go to 61. Tani sarvani samyamya yukta sita mat paraha. Go ahead, you can recite the Sanskrit a little bit. The Sanskrit? Yeah. Tani Sarvani Samyaya Yukta Asita Matparaha Vasehi Asyendriyani Tasya Praja Pratistihita. Yes, translation. One who restrains his senses, keeping them under full control, and fixes his consciousness upon me, is known as a steady a man of steady intelligence. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, so it's very interesting also. Huh? See, it says here, second line, Yukta Asita Matpara. Asita we discussed. It's one of the questions of Arjun in 54. Huh? How to engage the senses? So matparaha, matparaha, what does it mean matparaha? Prabhupada translates it as in relationship with me. Yes, fixing the mind on me. So this is the first time Lord Krishna mentions, refers to himself. First time, first time. It's the first drop of bhakti. So far, Krishna is the guru of sense control. Isn't it? Uh, is the guru of mind and sense control. But first drop of bhakti is dropped here. 61. Mat paraha. So basically he's telling us in essence that is the, the object on which the senses should be fixed. Is, is, is getting more specific. Then we can come to subjugation, you know. So there's three stages here, basically. There's control, there is concentration, and then there's conquest, the three C's. I call this verse the three C's. Try to remember. Uh, so let's go into that. Tani savani samyamya, control. There's a strain. When you control, it takes strain, no doubt. You need to prevent. In other words, there's an opposition force. You need to prevent when there is an opposition force. Tani savani, samyamya. It's like horses, you know, horses. You have to, especially untamed horses, you have to put a grip on the horse. So there's some sense of, of struggle. We cannot deny it. There's a strain needed. Just like, I'll give you an example. You go to the temple, not now because you are seasoned, but any outsider come to the temple. If he wants to benefit from his coming to the temple, he needs to control himself. When he enters the temple, if he's not controlled, if he's, he doesn't have to check everyone's dresses, or especially the girls, how they are dressed in nice sari and... No, if he does that, he won't be able to get the benefit of entering the temple. Mm. So even an outsider, he knows I'm going to a place of worship. I have to control myself. He may be a meditator, but he knows that. Why? Because 
there should be some kind of restriction if I want to benefit a little bit. That's the bottom line. So the, con the strength of the control should be there. So I can have a spiritual experience by coming to the temple. Otherwise, you may notice. You may be exposed to Krishna. Deities are there. Harinam Prabhu is there. But if you are totally unruly, yeah, not con uncontrolled, there is no benefit. As if you haven't gone to the temple, I think. So this is the first C. Tani Savani Samyamya. So we have to control the horse just so that we can come to the second C. What is the second C? It's right there. Yukta Asita Mat Paraha. Concentration. The second C is concentration. Fix the consciousness on me. In other words, you have been putting the grip on the horse. The horse becomes subjugated to some extent, then you, you give love to the horse, you give nourishment to the horse, you know? This is yukta asita matparaha. And then vashehi yasyen riyani. Then you can bring the whole, you can bring the senses under control. Now they are tamed, it's like conquest. So the three C's, control, concentration, Conquest. And then last line, tasya, pragya. Pragya means buddhi, intelligence, pratishtita. They are well situated. See, these verses are extremely important. So we can see, and Sri Prabhupada is very expert. Look at, he's, he's not giving a, a, a regular analogy here, he's giving a very pertinent analogy, very pertinent. Ambarish Maharaj, Duvas Muni. So please explain this confrontation, I mean, this conflict. How did Maharaj Ambarish come out victorious from that? There was a conflict. Huh? What happened? I don't want to be the only one speaking. <laughs> so uh, even though that, there was a question, actually. Maharaj Ambarish is way below in terms of Vanashram. So why did he come out victorious? Sorel, would you like to shed some light? Sure. I, I, didn't, I didn't go very in depth in my answer on this one, to be honest, but I okay. said that uh, the king was able to control his senses because he fixed his mind on Krishna. And even though he was seen as inferior, he was um, matpada, matpada, and like he had his relationship with the Lord that was keeping him Definitely. Like, in, on track. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you. Anyone would like to add up to that? Uh, uh, one more thing, like uh, in the purport itself, Prabhupada mentions that Maharaj Ambarish uh, actually utilizes, engages all his senses in the service yes. of Lord. Exactly. So he engages in all the nine aspects of the bhakti. So he was very much, uh, had a lot of devotional strength uh, to fight. Excellent. This is what I was expecting. Uh, even though, as I say, it's much lower in terms of Vanashram, but Rupa Goswami, Kriti Sadhya Bhavet Sadhya Bhava Sasadana Vida. Kriti Sadhya, we have to engage the senses. Kriti Sadhya Bhavet Nitya Bhavasya. So by engagement of the senses in devotional service, just like here, is using his kamendriyas, his hands, is, is washing the temple, is going to the temple. These are kamendriyas, organs of action. Huh? So, Kriti Sadhya, by engaging the senses for Krishna, then Sadhya Bhava, sooner or later, is, gonna, is going to give bhav, love. Just like a child, a child, he may tumble over, but he, within him, he's got the faculty to walk. So within even Vedi Bhakti, there is Bhav. Intrinsically, potentially. Prakatyam Bhavet Sadhyata. So we don't have to worry. 
We don't have to worry. It's every, it's a package. So that's why he came out way victorious. He was about, about to tell the Sudha Shanchakra, hold off. He's such an advanced devotee, Mat Para. Because he was engaging his senses. This is the key. This is the key. Yeah. Otherwise, devotional service means Prabhupada could have translated bhakti, devotion, bas. No. Devotional service means you do something with the senses. <laughs> this is the point. <laughs> you follow? I have a question. Yes. So, I'm, since I'm still, like, I'm very, very new to bhakti and everything, um, I was just curious, like, would you say, okay, so obviously, ideally, it, it'd be awesome, you know, engage all your senses in relationship to the Lord. That sounds wonderful, like a great ideal. But realistically speaking, is it still okay to, like, fake it till you make it almost? Until, like... Yeah, yeah, no, it's, like, fake. it's a very, yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. By just like Gaga Muni, uh, it's a way long, far gone story, 66. Everyone is paying Dandava to Prabhupada in 66, except one, Gaga Muni. He's still alive, Gaga Muni, Prabhu. And he's standing up, so it's quite odd. Everyone is on his knee. There's this one guy standing up. He never goes down. So then he, Prabhupada asked him, very gently, very jolly. Oh, you don't bow down. Well, I don't feel like it, the Prabhupada. So then Prabhupada answered your question, actually, Sorel. He said, by doing it, you will find a, a liking for it. So obviously, Maharaj Maharaj was rati. He's on the level of rati. Huh? He's on the level of practically ruchi, rati. But his intention, what was his intention? Is Sankalpa. Was there. His sankalpa is, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm not advanced, okay? He's saying so. But let me do something. Let me do practical stuff. Wash the, I mean, washing is not difficult. Washing, uh, what does he say? Karo hare mandir marjanadishu. Karo means the hands. I'm going to use my hands to clean. It's not difficult to clean. Shrutim shakara chuta sat kato daye. Kata, I'm going to hear the kata. Mukun lingilaya darshane drisho. So, yes, I'm going to do, use my senses. The kamendriyas, the ganendriyas. And because of that, he could withstand the conflict, he had a lifelong preparation. So when he was tested by Duvas Muni, Duvas Muni, don't, don't forget, his extension, his, his uh, emanation of, of Lord Chief. Uh, Vignesh, is that correct? Duvas Muni is extension of Lord Chief, uh, or expansion of Lord Shiva, isn't it? Vignesh? Vignesh is not here. Just <laughs> yeah, I, I just broke in between. That was a network issue. I just, I'm just back. Now. Yeah, I think, I think it's an extension of, of Lord Chief in Zavasamuni, isn't it? So very lofty, very lofty level, very lofty position. But he could, he could, Maharaj Maharaj could withstand. He was not able, by the way, Zavasamuni was not able to mat para. He was not a mat para devotee. He wasn't able to fix the mind on Krishna. Otherwise, he wouldn't have made this blunder. So we don't, if we don't fix the mind on Krishna, then we're going to be tested. At the time of death, you're going to be thinking of something that will determine your destination. There's one devotee, uh, Yogesh Chandra Prabhu. He, he told me the story. I was still today, I'm, I was, I'm blown away because he, he told me uh, he was a very honest devotee, very senior, and he had his difficulty seven years into Maya. And Prabhupada came in his dream and told him, at the time of death, you will feel so sorry. You cannot imagine. At the time of death, you will feel so sorry. You cannot imagine. 
that shook him so badly, so badly. He told me the story. Next morning, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. So see, this is the mercy of Prabhupada. <coughs> so it's not a joke. It's a reality. We are as if we are coming out from a, the place is on fire. It's not, a, it's, it's real. So it's not always just a nice philosophy, you know. It's practical action, practical application to save our lives, to save our soul. Otherwise, if we don't fix the mind on Krishna, if we don't strive yet at all, then at, you have seen devotees drifting away. They, at one point, they even become resentful. I've seen the whole process many times. Become indifferent. And then even further back, further out there, resentful. I don't want the books. Please take the books back. I'm, I'm fed up with all this. I, I lost my time. Even. I've seen devotees. I lost my time. I regret. I could have become successful. So this is the process of Krishna consciousness. We become aware. There's a certain awareness on, on our pitiful condition. So we don't bulge an inch because we know the danger is there. That's why we have to discuss among ourselves. This is one of the process of Bhakti Shastri, discussing from all angles of vision. And we should turn, unturn all the stones. This is one of the purpose of Bhakti Shastri, to reinforce ourselves. We are in full flesh Kali Yuga, it's gonna become worse. We can see yeah, there's all these things out there the vaccine and all this is is getting worse. Any questions before we move on? I'm here. You're here? <laughs> You're very sober today. <laughs> Good. Anyways, Krishna consciousness is sobering, right? That's very true. Okay, let's move on. So 62, 63, uh, it's a back to back, it goes together. Jayato Vishayam Pumsa Sangoste Shupa Jayate Sangat Sanjayate Kama Kamat Krodobi Jayate. Then Krodot Krodat Bhavati Samoha Samohat Smriti Vibramaha Smriti Brahmshat Buddhi Nasho Buddhi Nashat Panashati. Okay, someone can read can read the Sanskrit. It's always good to hear the Sanskrit. Dhyayato Vishayan Pumsaha Sangas Teshu Upajayate Sangat Sanjayate Kamaha Kamat Krodho Abhijayate. Yes. Sixty-three Krodhat Bhavati Sammoha Sammoha Smriti Vibramaha. Smriti Brahmshat Buddhi Nasho Buddhi Nasha Pranashyati. Yes. So are you still there, Golukananda Priya? Mataji? You want to read out 62, 63? Perhaps she's gone with the, the boy. Okay, so well, so it's your turn now. Seya Yato Vishyan Pumshaha Sangha Teshu Pajayate. Sangat Sanjaya Yate Kama Kamat Krodo Bijate. Sixty three is Krodad Bhavati Samoha Samohat Smriti Vibramaha Smriti Brahmashad Buddhi Nasho Buddhi Nashat Pranyashati. Very good. Translation. 62, while contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment for them. And from such attachment, lust develops and from lust, anger arises. And- yeah. Yes, yeah. go ahead, sorry. For translation for 63, from anger, complete delusion arises and from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. Very good. So one of the question was, please explain this powerful, uh, mysterious in one sense, it's totally unwanted, but it's scientific. Uh, 
one lead to the next. Try to explain it in your own words. You know, you, let's say you are, you have a good friend in life. He's not a devotee. And let's say he's going through divorce or uh, remarrying a young girl. Oftentimes it happens with men, you know. Well, because he's in total Maya. So you, you know, you, you have, you have good spirit for this person. You like him uh, from childhood, you know him, and you explain to him these two verses. Uh, so how would you present the thing to him? You always put your shoes, put yourself in the shoes of a non, of a totally brand new guy. This is the best way. So this way you can, how would, should I, what should I tell him so he can, or tell her so he can click? Be well, yes, sorry. So I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, I'm finished. <laughs> well, since, uh, since I am kind of a, a totally brand new guy, I figured uh, I might be a good one to answer this question. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Sure. <laughs> All right. So um, I just tried to put it in my own words. I'm just going to just read off my, my answer here. Yes. So I said, uh, every action has a reaction. And in this world, we receive good results or bad results for everything that we do. When we expose ourselves to too much external sense gratification, we become bound to this world and we become deeply illusioned by the influence of the material energy. In our illusion, we believe our body to be ourselves and we forget the spiritual reality behind the covering of this material energy. Yes. We, we become engrossed in the roles that we play and we begin a feedback loop which further entrenches us in the material energy. And therefore the learned man who knows of a higher reality and knows that the material world is temporary endeavors to control his senses and in this way, he hopes to lessen the grip of illusion that causes him to remain in a limited material body. Very good. So you have the knack of um, mastering English, uh, Jacob. It's good. Thank uh, you. So, yes, this, it's an eight-step degradation. Of course, Lokishna is so scientifically so scientific in his approach. Prabhupada said it's not a religion, Krishna consciousness. It's a scientific approach. Huh? So Jayato, Krishna doesn't say Pashyato. He could have said Pashyato Vishayam Pumsam. Sorry. Pashyato means to see. No. He's using very excellent use, usage of words. Jayato. It's not Pashyato. Jayatu is different. Jayatu means contemplate. Vishayam Pumsam. Pumsam means person. Yeah. So it's nice. Oh, it's nice. See, the, you are surrounded by time matra, sense object. So you see girls everywhere. You see good cars everywhere, good houses, good food. So there's no harm if you see. What is the difference between to see and to contemplate? Mm. I think to contemplate would be, you know, imagining yourself having those things or what you could do with all those resources or objects, whatever they are. Excellent. Prabhupada is in Louvre Museum in Paris. The, muse the Louvre Museum in Paris is the most visited museum in the world. 40,000 people a day. Not the biggest, but the most visited museum in the world. 40,000 people a day. He wow. went there. And it's like as big as Mayapur, this museum. So it's huge. It takes a couple of days. So, and there's so many like antique paintings, sculptures, you name it. It goes back 10,000 years, this museum. So there's so many nude sculpture of ladies. Papa is watching one sculpture, naked sculpture of a female. And devotees are extremely embarrassed. <laughs> Papa is watching. And then he turns towards them and he said, can't you appreciate the beauty of the creation of God? You understand? Of course, it's probably We cannot imitate. Uh, there's a difference between walking in the footsteps and imitation. But contemplate means you go back on the object of the sense. Once, twice. Once is okay, because they are there. 
twice, thrice, four times. It's nice. I'm attracted. Mm. Then we discussed before, the imagination is triggered. This is one of the purpose of the mind. Imagination is, is a, a function of the mind. Mm. That is why there's a necessity to spiritualize our imagination. Imagine, imagination is a great tool. If we don't spiritualize our imagination, it will, without fail, drag us. We discuss, drag us. Haranti, Prasabam Manaha, 60. It will drag us towards Maya. So why is, is it so important to spiritualize the imagination? Because this will enable us to dovetail the propensity of the mind also. See, you have to be a little tricky with the mind. The mind has so many different components within it. Mm. So what you do, you start with one component. One component of the mind is imagination. So you have to spiritualize it. Then gradually, just like a horse is being tamed, put a grip on it, this will enable you to dovetail this propensity of the mind. So gradually you gain, you gain ground, you gain, you know, you gain ground within the mind. This is the trick. So first one, then Sangha, Teshu, Upajayate. Then Sangha, attraction. First is contemplation. Attraction, I want it. I want it. Sangha. So what's going to happen is because we are conditioned souls as devotee, it can rekindle dormant attachment within us. We are thinking, oh, okay, now it's gone with the wind. No. I remember Bhagavan Prabhu used to tell us, Bhagavan, of course, you may say he left his con, but he was very powerful. Uh, when I joined, he was still around, extremely powerful devotee. He used to tell us, Maya is right there on your shoulder. You turn a little bit, she's, she's there waiting. So you, Sangha Teshu Pajayati means you are going to rekindle dormant attachment within you because you were a non devotee before, isn't it? Just like me. So it's like scientific contemplation. Then, what is it? Like, so, 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 yes, attraction, attachment. Then Sangat, Sanjayati, Kamaha. Come, you know, come. I want it. I want it. Infuriation, I think you say in English, infuriation. Don't do it. Your consciousness, your conscience will tell you, don't do it. You don't have the money, whatever. No, I don't care. I want to do it. This is calm. Calm is forceful. Remember in the guitar, third chapter? Kamaesha. First of all, Arjun is asking, at what, how does it go, this verse? How you relative pumsam? No, not this one. At the end of the third chapter, Vignesh, remember? Atakena prayuto yam papam charati purushaha. What is it, Krishna, that forcibly impel us to act in Maya? What is it? Against our will, even. Shri Bhagwan Uvacha, Kamaisha, Krodaisha, Rashotuna, Samud Bhavaha, Mahashana, Mahapapmo, Vijena, Yavirinam. Very clear. It's only lust. Calm. Not five, not two, one fellow only, Mr. Lust. Uh, extremely powerful entity, formidable enemy. Gorgo Manaj used to call it the formidable enemy. Born of contact with Rajagun, Samud Babaha. Come from Rajagun, mode of passion and transform into wrath, infuriation. I want it. I don't care. I want it now. I want to use my brain to get it. This is Sangat Sanjayati Kama. 
It's not a joy. Then Kamat Kroda Abhijayate. Then infuriation, now it goes to obsession. It becomes obsessed. You become obsessed. You become obsessed by her, by him, by this car. But oftentimes, you know, sex life means the other gender. It's, it's more vivid uh, because this is the most forbidden one enemy. Uh, you're obsessed by this lady, by this girl, even though she, you're not married to her. Who can stop me? You can see the state of affair in love affair. It's very vivid. Two boys, one girl, the same old story. You can see it over and over again in movies since time immemorial. Two boys, one girl. Doesn't it work like this? Two boys, one the girl. And obviously the girl likes one of the boys better. Then crowed, crowed for the other guy. And it builds up. I may kill him. I may kill the guy. It happens. They may kill. Or you may, you have seen in India, they're even going to throw acid on the face of the girl. I cannot enjoy the girl. Let me destroy a face so he cannot enjoy, so the other guy cannot enjoy. Isn't it true? You have seen Vignesh these things? It happens often in India. Yes. Yeah. I've seen. I was 12 years in India. It's, I mean, how horrible you have to be. Why? Because you let, you let the mind, you become obsessed. It's way beyond the intelligence. It's gone with the wind over there. To destroy the girl's face for life. And actually, you, you want, actually, your intent is to harm the boy. I don't want her. I could not enjoy the girl. I don't want him to enjoy her. So I, I destroy the face. See, uh, the tension of... Gyan Vigyan Nashanam. Krishna says in the third chapter, it destroys Gyan, it destroys Vigyan. Sometimes you may wonder, I mean, he was such a lofty devotee, even Guru, Sanyas, giving extraordinary classes. He's gone with the wind. What happened? Because Gyan Vigyan Nashanam, it destroys both. You understand the power of Gyan, of uh, Kam, sorry? And this is extremely powerful. Extremely powerful. Let's carry on. Obsession. Krodat, Bhavati, Samoha. Irritation. I, I try to put some key words so, so you can be more, be more vivid for you. Irritation, you lose awareness. You lose awareness. You stop Shastra Shakshu. Uh, we are supposed to be Shastra Shakshu. We see, we see through the eyes of Shastra. You lost that, finish. Irritation. Then I wrote, Samohat Smriti Vibrama. Delusion, confusion. Remember the Gita, 16.7? Pravritim cha, nivritim cha, jana, na vidu, asuraha. The asurs, what makes them asur? They don't know what is to be done and they don't know what is not to be done. They don't know. This is asur. If you don't know, it means you're asur. They don't know. Confused, delusion. It's a very, very powerful pair of verses. Huh? Smriti Brahmshat. Smriti Brahmshat, Buddhi Nashaha. Oblivion. I wrote oblivion. Intelligence is based on memory, isn't it? Intelligence is based on memory. To the extent we lose our memory, we lose our intelligence. We lose Smriti. Smriti Shastra, it's gone. You may know the whole Gita, 500 verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam, because, but Gyan Vigyan Nashanam, you are under the purview of lust, gone with the wind, memory of all your verses. 
They were meant to pop out in your brain to stop you from falling under, Maya? No. Because you are far gone in the process of degradation now. You, number seven is finished. Story is over. Smriti Shastra. Smriti Brahmshat. Buddhi Nashaha. Intelligence is God. Remember, the intelligence is the next door neighbor of the soul. Senses are gone. Mind is gone. The last hope is buddhi. Buddhi is gone. You're finished. Finished. And then the final step of the fiasco, uh, buddhi nashat pranashati. I wrote stupefaction. Stupefaction. You fall away from buddhi yoga. Uh, you fall back into material consciousness. Destruction. Destruction. And then you find them, oh yes, I was a monk when I was 20, you know, 20 to 30. It was a nice experience. Of course, you may say, no loss in one sense. True. But he lost one life. Those 10 years will be capitalized. Yes, agree. Accounted for. Next life, it will start off at 11 persons. Yes. But what a shame. You know? What a waste of time. So you see the power of those verses. Any questions on those? Today you're like <laughs> extremely sober. <laughs> Contemplating a lot. I, I just keep thinking about how it's just so, it's such a radical paradigm shift from material consciousness. Material consciousness rewards the very things that a devotee is trying to uh, abstain from. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's interesting. It's diametrically opposite. It's diametrically mm -hmm. opposite. And I mean, we don't lose out because it's just like, you know, uh, a great sick person is extremely sick and is trying to recover, gradually is recover. In the process of recovering, he has to abstain from particular foodstuff. He cannot afford at all to even break this diet. It's even a little bit of it will throw him back into heavy sickness. Mm. So, but it doesn't mean that once you're back in shape, you leave the hospital, that, you know, on a very high level of specialty, Brahmabhut, Nirgun, uh, what to speak of Svarup CD, once you are reinstated in your Svarup next to Krishna, then you have fun. You know what I'm saying? So we are great sick people. We have to follow the process of recovery you know it doesn't mean we are we're gonna to have to abstain from full stuff forever <laughs> you know what i'm saying once we are back into our star of cd we are spirit soul we are parashakti we are tatashta shakti we are meant to be with Krishna. we are meant to be enjoyed by krishna Prabhupada say we are meant to be enjoyed by krishna We don't know what is spiritual sex life. <laughs> in, in the first verse of the Bhagavatam 111, you see at the bottom of purple, long purple, Srila Prabhupada, he quotes Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur on Adiras. Krishna is Adiras. We don't know. To be in love is Krishna. This is, this is the, the transcendence, transcendence sex life. One time Prabhupada is crossing the Pandal of Mumbai to go to his seat. There's alpha lakh people in there, full of people. People are, devotees are making his way first. They're breaking, parting the crowd. They are all seated. So Prabhupada can move across to his seat way up there on the, you know, on the, on the podium, on the platform. Prabhupada stops 
And he said, he looks at the devotees, at the, sorry, the crowd, and with his cane like this, and he turns towards his devotees, he say, this is my sex life. <laughs> so in other words, preaching, you know, mm. in other words, you're bringing people back to Krishna. This is, basically, this is the word, the work of Shrimati Radharani. What does Shrimati Radharani do? She engages others towards Krishna. Telling the girls, you go and serve Krishna. You become Krishna's wingman. Yeah, I, I, I'm not fit. You go, you go. Mm. Krishna, please accept her. Accepting is good. Mm. So Shumateradarani is doing that. Then you got your ticket. <laughs> so, you know, so that's what it is. You know, you're helping one jiva soul to reconnect with Krishna. This is transcendental love. Yeah. So what to speak? Well, now we cannot taste that love because we are still, at least as far as I'm concerned, we are still sick. You know, we are just on the threshold of leaving the hospital. So this is, those verses are very much applicable to us. We are on the threshold, but we can have a relapse. Mm. And oh, my dear sir, sorry, you're sick again. You have to go back in there. Another one, one month, two months. Let's we'll take it from there in two months. We'll assess again. Sorry, you have to go back, be, be uh, accepted back. So we are on the threshold. We can, oh, it's finished. I can, I'm free. No way. These verses testify to that. You know, okay, let's carry on. You stop me if you have anything to say. Well, I have one question. Yes. Like, uh, as you told, uh, right, we are on the threshold. Like, uh, normally when, you know, our purpose, when we normally listen, it is like we are the marginal potency of a Lord. So, uh, aren't we always on the threshold? Uh, is it like we are threshold currently in the material world and but not in the spiritual world? Uh, like, aren't we always like on a threshold, on a margin uh, to fall from here or there? Yeah, it's a very good question. Everyone understood? Yes. Surail and yes. Golukananda Priya. Yes, we are Tatashta Shakti. So Tata means bank. Right? A river has two banks. No, you can't help it. Two banks. So we are hovering between those two banks. Maya Shakti, Devidam. Now Devidam means this world, the world of Devi, Durga, Parvati. And then the other bank is. Haridam, spiritual world. So we remain at the Shakti, even though we may be liberated. One time I asked this question to Bhakti Vijapuna Maharaj in Mayapur. I remember. Maharaj, once we are, let's say, even in Bomarila. Bomarila means once you get into your Svarup, you're going to be joining the drama band, the drama group of Lord Krishna in his Bomalila next. In his next Bomalila, you will be there. Can you imagine? You are being trained up. The last little touches left, that, that should be touched up a little bit by the Ragatmika Bhakta, the, the, the Parshads of Lord Krishna in Raj or Mayapur. So, but Prabhupada did say, if you remain, my question was, Maharaj, do we remain Tatashta or we become Chit Shakti? We become, we become, Tatashta is part of Chit Shakti, by the way. Or do we become Shakti Tatwa? You know, no. We retain of Tatwa. We retain our Jivatma Tatwa. We remain, we retain our Tatashta position. And Prabhupada did say something in, in his class, one of his classes, he said, even the gopi can fall down. Potentially, just like you can put your hand, I go in the kitchen downstairs, I put the fire on and I put my hand 10 minutes in the fire. I can do it. I can jump up from this window. Potentially I can do, but I'm not gonna do it, but I can do it. So Tatashta means we, we are marginal position. We have the choice. We, always, we will always have the choice. That is why Lord Krishna is very merciful towards the Vibhinnamsha, 
We are Vibin Namsha. We are separated Namshas. We are not plenary portion. Have you seen plenary portions acting against Krishna? Have you seen Ayagriv, Nushingadev, Vamdev? They are Amshas. They are Kala. Amshas of Amshas, portion of a portion. Have you seen them acting antagonistically against Krishna? Because they are primary portion or portion of primary portion. But we are not that in that category. We are Vibhinnamsha. Vibhinnam means separated. So we are Chikana and we are Tatashta, means we always we will always have the free will. That is why, to my, this is my own understanding and my own realization. To me, it seems that when a devotee, a, a jeev, a tatashta a devotee, uh, we are all tatashta, over against all odds, year after year, even life after life, it may take a few lifetimes, it carries on towards Krishna. Matpara, we discussed today. Then Krishna is very touched because he knows this guy has the choice. But still, he's not, he doesn't misuse his choice. It's even more laudable, if you ask me. Mm. It's even more laudable. Because he can, he can take the wrong choice. He has done it in the past. But still, I can see, I can testify. He's sticking, sticking to my past, mad para. So, Lord Krishna, that's, that invokes his love even more. Mm. You cannot, can you see, can you expect... Uh, <laughs> Primary portion of the Lord acting against Krishna. No, they are just expansion of his own body. We are Vibin Namsha. We are not in the same. We are Vibhu, we are sorry, Anu, tiny, infinitesimal, plus we are Tatashna. So from to start with, we have much greater odds against us. So now if we, in spite of all these odds, we stick to Krishna. That's extremely endearing to Lord Krishna. This is my realization. Uh, seems to me that's the way it works. Does it help, uh, Vignesh? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. Uh, okay, so where are we? 60. Prabhu, can we yes? have like a uh, like five minute break? Real oh, quick? yeah, sure. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you to remind me. Yeah? Well, yeah, we can have a little break. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Let's uh, record. So let's move into 65, I believe. Huh? Are we into 65? Uh, 64. 64, sorry. Yeah, so let's. 64, yeah, the, the Prashadam verse. I call it the Prashadam verse. <laughs> okay, so. Read it, you can read out. Anyone? 64. Ragadve sa vimuktais tu, visayan idrayas taram, atma vaisyar vidhe yatma, prashadham adhigat chati. But a person free from all attachment and aversion and able to control his senses through regulative principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord. So we're answering which question of Arjun in 54? Is, uh, how does he walk? Very good. So in other words, how a person in transcendence engages his senses. Basically, that's what it is. The, all these questions have internal meanings as well. Vidyatma. Huh? So you can see here in uh, 64, Vidyatma. If you follow free, the principles of freedom, prasadam, then you get prasadam. Prasadam means food, but also mercy. Adigachati. And this is totally opposite to what non-devotees think. No. You are being constrained in following regulations. You're not free. What are you talking about? I'm free. No. You got it backwards. What is religion for non-devotee is irreligion for a devotee and vice versa. So, and it's very interesting 64, 
because Popat says, it may seem that the devotee is on the sensual plane. Huh? Because he lacks food, you know, like you have seen devotees eat much more than, than a non-devotee. Did you notice that? <laughs> Isn't it true? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> By far. Yeah. So they, they will end up, well, look at those guys. Look at those girls. Are they eating like anything? They're, but they don't understand. First of all, first of all, my guru Maharaj told me the story. Papa is sick. I mean, he's on the last days, his last days. My guru Maharaj was, you know, Shila Pakticharu Maharaj, he was very close. And Papa he couldn't even eat two months without eating. And he, he's, he's telling, he's sending my guru, please go and check the food. What do they eat? Make sure they eat well. So then he's going back up. Is reporting. This is what they have for dinner. Papa said, "No, I don't. That's no, good. Not good enough. Bring the cook. Bring the cook. He's blasting the cook. No, he cannot eat himself. He's like skin bones. Mm. It's not good enough. Make good prasad. And Papa said, "This is the only sense gratification. Give good prasad to the devotee, and it's not different from Krishna." So, you know, it may apparently look like we are on the sensual plane, but because he's Krishna conscious, he has no attachment to sensual activities. Like today, I'll give you an example. Today, I just dropped my boy to the, to the temple. He had a music class. Just when I was about to leave, one devotee told me, hey, this is the feast, stay. But I had eaten, you know, I had eaten, I had a late breakfast. I had eaten perhaps one hour prior to that. So I said, probably no, I have to I teach at four and, you know. But I, I was not jumping on the food, even though I could have stayed if I wanted to, you know. So we like it, but at the same time, we have no attachment. Mm. So in other words, if Krishna wants, we're going to do anything that ordinarily would have been undesirable for us. And vice versa. If Krishna doesn't want, we're not going to do that thing that ordinarily we used to lack it for on satisfaction. So this is Krishna consciousness. And then, did you notice the last sentence? Look at the last sentence of this purple. It's it's mind-boggling. I want you to explain to me this, this sentence. The last sentence. It's a key sentence in the Gita. The last sentence of, of 64. Go ahead. Can someone read out? <laughs> this, causeless, or this consciousness, rather, is the causeless mercy of the Lord which the devotee can achieve in spite of his being attached to the central platform. So please explain that. Mm. It's a very interesting sentence, very deep. What does it mean? Just my first thought, maybe someone else can add, but my first thought is that Krishna um, is giving mercy to the, the aspiring Sadaka and and helping him to become less attached to sense gratification. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? It's a very deep sentence. It means, I mean, this is my understanding <laughs> again. <laughs> it's relative. That even though you may be in full Maya you still have a special mercy coming from Lord Krishna. Why? Because you have been rendering service. So Krishna has spotted you. Whereas a non-devotee, because he never turned towards Krishna, is not treated by Krishna, he's treated by Paramatma. Mm. Remember 929? Namit Veshosti Napriya I, do, I don't hate anyone. I don't like anyone. I'm neutral. Upasin udasinavat, like a judge. Mm. Udasinavat. 
This is the state of affair for non-devotees. Neutral, neutral gear. We're not in neutral gear. You may have noticed on yourself when you are, your consciousness is not so high. You know, you have, you're a bit low in consciousness uh, and you are vulnerable to Maya in that, in that state of affair. But still that mercy of the Lord is still available to you. Mm. Always. This is the prerogative of a devotee. That is why we should never combine the two. We should never equate the two. I remember long back, I was not, I, I was quite new in Krishna consciousness. I had a girl brother, married, two kids. He was a bit struggling. And at one point he left. He told me, look, I'd rather be a good Christian than a bad Hare Krishna. What would you say to that? I'd rather be a good Christian. He went back to Christianity and stuff, divorced, and it was a fiasco. And I was like standing as a fool. I could have, no, I wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> and I was kind, kind of dumbstruck, you know, I was quite new. What would you say to him? Whether it be, I don't know, whether it be a good Christian than a banana Krishna. Mm. What would you say to him? faith in Krishna yeah but you have to be practical the guy is living <laughs> you know he's about to leave he's about to drop Krishna consciousness he's about to drop his guru he did actually I feel like though even if, if if he's if that's what works for him the path of Christianity and he feels like he's being a good Christian I mean frankly I don't see what's so bad okay about so him. you mean to say okay let's go back to Miti Ting and I'll become a good Christian yeah, because in Christianity, you could technically you can drink, you can meet, eat meat, and do so many other things that. So the pathway to hell is, is paved with good intentions. Mm. Uh, so I think that we should tell him, look, Prabhu, this sentence is key. You could have, we could have told him this sentence, even though you may feel yourself fragile and, and awkward and not very advanced, but still the mercy of Krishna is always there for you. And plus, Nehabi Kram Nashatusti, 240, whatever little step you do is acquired. You cannot fall back. So at least within the midst of the devotees, you are protected. And then from within the midst of the devotees, you can again reinforce yourself, get your strands back hmm. yeah. what if that person though like i feel like the, the sentence that you said maybe like they feel so undeserving of that mercy though from krishna so it's like then what do you say because like if you're saying oh well like you, you are deserving of it but if the person is so believed that they're not deserving of it then okay very good answer very good angle i would say and i'm talking about realization because i know what it is like Personally, I noticed that, that when you're not so Krishna conscious and you still feel the love of Krishna towards you, that happens to me many times. Uh, you, you are kind of weak, and, but you can feel that Krishna is not judging you, is still loving you. That itself is going to propel back your appreciation of towards him mm -hmm. because you know i mean materially speaking if you do something against someone else that person's going to start despising you or at least being different to you or neutral okay do as you think but i don't care looking the other side mm -hmm. but krishna is not doing that krishna is again you know against all us krishna is still loving us and he's showing us that he's loving us even though we uh, we are weak and we are ungrateful mm -hmm. so when you feel that even though you're not deserved you don't deserve that love at this particular point in time because you you know very well you are in my heart you cannot you cannot fool yourself but still you feel the love that's going to re 
awaken your appreciation and gradually put you back on track because you realize this person loved me so much. So that very realization of that engulfs you into, into, into love, into appreciation. And you, you feel ashamed and repentant. And that's repentance is the ingredient that moves you back on track. This is the point. Krishna says, tells Udav in the 11th canto that the sadaka, even the even the, the practicing sadaka who, who sticks to Anyabhidashita Shunyam Ganakamanavita, if he sticks to that, so he's practicing sadaka bhakti, sadhana bhakti is even Utam practitioner. But even because of his vasanas, of his samska, he may still be assailed, assaulted by Maya, and sometimes even succumb. But if that repentance is there, then Krishna again will help lift him up and he carries on his journey. 9.30, Apichat Sudhana Charu, Abhajate Manyabhat. So, of course, we should not take advantage, we know that. But I mean, this is what I would say, Sorel. You know, the, we, you may be feeling undeserving of that mercy, like you said, but when you feel that even though you are undeserving, still is showing you love and concern, that's going to reawaken and re, how do you say, trigger off again this, your, your good side, your divine side. Mm. And you know, it's like you know you have been slamming the door on your father for for the last twenty years, and you become a, a derelict in the street. You become a vagabond, and, and there's no at you have no choice, and you crawl back to the door of your father. You know, and and your your father is not going to say, well, "Where the hell were you?" Uh, oh, my boy, my son. So the, the, the father doesn't consider this is love. So that itself is going to engulf you. Mm. And this is Krishna. So that is why that sentence is there, if you ask me. <laughs> this, is, this is the depth of the sentence. Papa knows. Papa is extremely potent. Huh? OK, so let's move on. Today we, <laughs> we're going to. Mm. I, I really love the imagery that you um, used earlier in the class of the, um, you know, toddler who, who is trying to walk um, because, you know, it just is so apt because there's times when you fall down when you're trying to walk, but the, uh, you know, the parent is encouraging the child to, to keep walking regardless or to keep, to keep trying to walk. And eventually, you know, they will, they'll walk, but there, there's going to be times when you fall down. Yeah. and whatnot and and the child may feel so undeserving or whatever but the parent just loves the child for being his child yeah. you know and and uh anyway i just no no I just really like that. actually yeah. this is not for me and this is from shira Prabhupada, or perhaps even rub goswami in uh in the bacteria somewhere in sindhu hmm. uh, so you, we can see that even via sadev was not totally satisfied in the, in the first canto. Remember, he, he compiled so many, so much, so many Vedic literature. Mm. Uh, but you know, he came to the point, and it it was acknowledged by his guru Narad. He came to the point that yes, I, I got sidetracked, but he could have stopped there. No. I'm still feeling the love of Krishna and, and, and I have to do my job. And he came up with Srimad Bhagavatam. He was empowered for that. Shakaran Bhagavu Rishihi. Shakaran Bhagavu Rishihi he is Bhagavan. So, you know, even though he got sidetracked, but ultimately at the end of the day, he got it right. He concentrated on Krishna Kata. Okay, so let's. Well, I would just like to uh, ask one question regarding this purport. Uh, like in the last sentence, uh, like often this verse is quite off quoted, like the word causeless mercy. 
uh, I just want to understand exactly what is the meaning when we say causeless mercy. Uh, is it like without any cause? Yes, exactly. Aetuki apratiyata. It's coming from there. Uh, you know the verse in the beginning of first canto, second chapter. Aetuki apratiyata. It's causeless. It's it's it should be uninterrupted and causeless, unmotivated. Causeless means unmotivated. So from the side of the Lord, it's there is no cause to it. Because he loves us. Love is beyond any cause. You know, just like, just imagine for a mother, she has one of her boy who became a bandit, a murderer. And she knows my boy is finished. He's, he's, he's a rascal, basically. But still, she loves him. So causeless means there is no reason behind there is no absolutely no, no material reason. There's no rational. Causeless mercy of the of the Lord it means we are, it's always there. Just like another story comes to mind. Uh, I agree, with Prabhu. He left. He, he left the body long back, eighty nine. One of the first devotee. I mean, he met, he met Prabhupada in sixty five in the street. First devotee, I would say. Perhaps after Mukun Prabhu, Mukun Maharaj. Uh, and, you know, I mean, he had, he was from that hippie era, you know, like LSD and then night, you know. This is like heavy stuff, you know, and I, coming from that batch. <laughs> and, and he was, you know, he had very bad uh, second habit with this, you know, that never left him. And Prabhupada knew about it. He was a great guy. I mean, he, he, Prabhupada used to call him even after initiation, Dr. Will, uh, Professor Will. He was an English teacher in Ohio University. And he's the first one, first typewriter in his car. And he used to type all the purpose of Prabhupada. You know, he had a stack of pages to type it in. He did a lot, but you know, weakness of heart for this addiction. And Prabhupada put him against the wall. He says three times more, you finished. I, I just break you loose. That's heavy. You, I, I just break you loose. So what happened is, when Prabhupada told him that Giraj was there, it was not. Maharaj, Giraj, uh, you know him, still around. And Prabhupada told him. And what happened? Even though Prabhupada told him, I'll break you loose. Still, addiction. One, two, three. It came to the, and Prabhupada confronted him, I told you, three times. I reject you. So then Giraj was there, he was taken aback. Taken aback. Because he knew this person is practically the, the first disciple. Giraj was, he told me the story. He was totally taken aback. He was stupefied. And I agree, leaves the door, leaves out the door. Then Giraj is asking, Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, how could it be? Is it true you, you're rejecting him? He was because so, so even more senior than Giraj, much more senior. John is 65, 65, 66, so senior. Prabhupada said, no. <laughs> no. The Guru cannot reject. I don't I want him to be back on track, but no. This is like that. Just to tell you the story, I agree if Prabhu would come, even in Hawaii, it happens. Yeah. Prabhupada had a GBC meeting in Hawaii. Big guys, all the big guys are there, you know, big top management. And one secretary is telling, is like whispering in the ear of Srila Prabhupada, I agree if Prabhu has come. Prabhupada said, 
with this band meeting. <laughs> with this band meeting. We'll, we'll meet later. And he, 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 he just, he actually embraced him. This is causeless mercy. You know. So we could uh, say that causeless means not a material cause. But uh, of course, like bhakti is a spiritual cause, which attracts the mercy of Krishna. So in that sense, it is causeless in the sense of it is being a material cause. There's no material cause for the Lord to, right? Yeah. This is what I understand. This, yeah, but even, okay, give me the spiritual cause behind bhakti then. Like what I generally understand is only when we do bhakti, then we get a mercy of Lord. Like a jnani yogi may not get a bhakti of Lord. But in that sense, it cannot be causeless. There is, there, was my, there is an implication of what I'm understanding from that word. Yeah, actually, we have to understand the mercy of the Lord is transported by the Madhyama Dikari. Uh, in other words, look at ourselves. When we got connected to Krishna consciousness, it was through the medium of a Madhyam, basically a preacher. Uh, we got a piece of Alva or book or Harinam or coming to a class somewhere. So that's the mercy of the Madhyam. So in other words, the Madhyam, again, it's causeless. The Madhyam is causeless because he's giving you the, the mercy irrespective. He doesn't know who is who. Is he fallen? Is it not? So you're receiving the mercy. And now according to your adhikar, you're going to respond accordingly. For some people, it will take a lot of causeless mercy. <laughs> For the others, one encounter is sufficient to how do you say, rev up the whole thing, you know, because it's right under the skin. It's right there. The adhikar is much higher. So this is causeless. That is why we should never stop those three activities, book distribution, prashad, harinam, because we are paving the way towards the, if we remove those three, there's no hope. Do you see people can come up on their own they have the adhika. Oh, tell me about Krishna consciousness. No, they don't have. You have to pave the bridge. Prabhupada was so keen on those three activities. Otherwise, we cut them loose. It's not Christianity or Muslim or whatever who's, who's going to make them back to Goloka Vrindavan. <laughs> no way. They will keep on revolving in this material world forever. A little piety. Losing that piety, go back a little in pious, pious, in pious in, for, for, for life, for eternity. Only those three activities, transcendental activities, can pave the way. Otherwise, it's, it's doomed. Mm. Earlier in the class, you mentioned how Prabhupada considered and taught that uh, Krishna consciousness is a science, not a religion. Yeah, true. You agree? Absolutely. I, uh, <laughs> no? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, the temporary dharmas and, and religions that uh, are the practices that most religions emphasize, uh, according to our per point of view with Krishna consciousness, would entangle you further in the material energy. Yeah. Some of the practices. Yes. Like personally, you know, if I had been uh, way back in mid 80s, uh, if I had been told, okay, it's another. Hindu religion, I, it wouldn't have clicked on me, that's for sure. I was enthralled because, thrilled, I would say, because, I mean, that was the absolute truth. And I was thinking to myself, I remember, I wish I hadn't met those guys <laughs> because I knew I was finished. <laughs> Deep inside, I knew I was finished. I was just like 24, 25. The whole, the whole life is ahead of me. And I was like doing well. I was not like a pauper. Full career and everything was happening. And I, I mean, I'm finished. <laughs> I'm just, I'm finished. I, can, I can't pretend I'm not finished, but I'm finished. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> but wait, because I mean, there's no flow. There's no flow. It's flawless. And it's scientific. I mean, like you said, it, 
I, I, it's very rigorous, in, mm. it's systematic, you know, it's like we discussed today, it's rigorous. That's one of the things that attracted me so much to Srila Prabhupada. He, he says, this is this and this is that. And there's no postmodern kind of like intermingling and, and indefinite, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, absolute, and, you know? definitely. I really like that. Definitely. Prabhupada is categorical, you know, he's assertive. So that makes him totally different from any, even other gurus, other acharyas. He's, is one one of one of his own kind. It's it comes once in a very blue moon. This kind of personality, you know. It's, mm. Just like we had Krishna, Mahaprabhu, Prabhupada. It's three in a row, you know. I mean, it's, it's unheard of. First of all, to get Krishna is once in the kalpa. Then behind Krishna, in case you didn't get it, you got Mahaprabhu. You know, following following yoga, and then. 500 years later, just in case you still didn't get it, Prabhupada. Hmm. So, I mean, oh, we, we are, there's no God. It's amazing. We are in the most fortunate time. Practically more than, than ever before. Krishna, Mahaprabhu, Prabhupada. I mean. So it's like that's triple dose, you know, <laughs> triple dose. <laughs> Hare Krishna. I'll stop here because I've got an English class at, in 10 minutes. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Krishna, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank so you. Hare Krishna. keep well. Uh, we'll see each other in... Uh, we didn't cover much, I'm sorry, but... No, we covered plenty. Yeah, we I, thought, we I thought of going deep today for a change. Yeah, <laughs> it was deep today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.